Good morning, guys. Can you say good morning? She said good morning. The mic is right here in front of me, so I'm not sure if you heard her, but um, as you can tell, my setting is a little different. So uh, we came uh, to have an early Thanksgiving with Sharon's uh, older kids. And um, and then uh, we'll be back for Sunday service. But anyways, guys, um, I think this is going to be a really good topic uh, about the book of Acts, you know. And uh, hopefully you got a... You got up to have to start off a great day. Uh, God is good because you're watching this because that means you're breathing, you know. And um, you know, I I'm glad to see all the comments of yesterday's devotional. Uh, it was kind of a, as you guys know, a couple of days ago I did a whole devotional and uh, I was just looking at myself in the camera and it wasn't recording. <laughs> And I, after I did the whole devotional, I realized it didn't record, and I wasn't about to do it again. And then yesterday, um, I kind of ended up doing uh, the same. You know, I ended up doing this, the devotional over again yesterday. I mean, not exactly word for word, obviously, but it, it came out good. Yeah. So pretty much yesterday's devotional was what didn't get recorded the day before for the most part. Um, but... Um, I did want to talk about the book of Acts and the book of Ephesians, guys, actually. Um, as you guys know, in case you don't know, because I know there's some people here that have been reading the Word of God for many, many years, and some of you have not, you know, and uh, this whole thing is, is new to you, you know, and um, I just wanted to talk about that for a minute. Uh, the book of Acts is basically like... Um, you know, the Gospels, the, the life of Jesus, Ma uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are four different accounts of the life of Jesus. It'd be like uh, if somebody followed you in your ministry, if four people followed you and each of them wrote, you know, what what they saw you do, you know, over a span of a couple years, you know, three years, three and a half years. And um, obviously... Uh, how can you compact three and a half years into a few pages? So that's why you're going to see a few different accounts. You're going to see something in Luke that you don't see in Matthew. You're going to see something in John that you don't see in Mark and vice versa. Matter of fact, out of those four, um, only two of them actually walked with Jesus, Matthew and John. Uh, and as far as Luke and uh, Luke was a physician and, um, Mark was also somebody that was um, uh, heard the story from Peter himself. Peter didn't write a gospel, but he got it from Peter. So even though two wa walked with Jesus, the other two, um, actually Luke actually starts off that gospel by saying that because he was a doctor, he was he was very literate. He was very like a journalist. He actually went to piece together the story of Jesus by investigating and talking to people that were there. So if, if Matthew, Mark, Luke, John were alive now, Luke would have been, Luke's book would have been a documentary. He would have had different people talking about, like somebody would have been like, yeah, I was there when he fed the 5,000. And Luke would have been like, really? I really want to hear about that. Tell me. You know, and then he pieced together. So Luke, I love what Luke did, is that he felt it really important because he kept hearing the story of Jesus and he knew this this story has to be written down. And so what Luke did is interview different people and then put it in chronological order so it can be a story from beginning to end. So that was Luke's approach, you know. And um, Matthew, Matthew was a previously a tax collector. He was hated, um, but he was a Jewish man. So if you read Matthew, you're going to see a lot of reference to the Old Testament because that mattered a lot to the Jews because the Jews were not going to hear anything unless it tied into the Old Testament. So that's why when you read Matthew, you're going to see a lot of things that pertain to the scriptures, you know, and um, you see Mark, Mark, um, his gospel 
pertained a lot to the non-Jews. Because to a non-Jew person, guys, think about it. They don't even know the Old Testament. They, they want to know who Jesus is, what he did. So when you see Mark, there is not a lot of references to the Old Testament because he was writing to the to Romans and Greeks. And, you know, so they they would have got lost if he would have been quoting a lot of the Old Testament. And um, and John was the last one to write the Gospel of John. And uh, he's, his was written, he had read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And it's interesting because John came from a different perspective because he came from a perspective that Jesus was God in the flesh, you know, and uh, it's almost like he, he was the little cherry on top of the gospels. He wanted to sum it up. He didn't want to retell the same stories they did. John's whole, whole purpose was to establish that Jesus was and is the Messiah. But anyways, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was the story of Jesus. His, his life here on earth, his ministry here on earth. But then comes the book of Acts right after that. And the book of Acts is interesting because in movie form, it would be the sequel. It would be part two. You know, and uh, so you got four gospels, but now you got Acts. Who wrote the book of Acts? Luke did. So I imagine Luke um, went to do a interview people that were still alive you got to remember, it's been about 20 years that had passed since the time of Jesus. That's why he felt an urgency to write down the life of Jesus and put it in order. But there was overflow of that because a couple decades had passed. And so people that were there with Jesus, maybe they were 20 years old when they saw Jesus. They're now 40 years old. So they're recounting these things. And maybe some of them he had to um, talk to a few people that were there. Uh, just to get the story straight and the story right. But a lot had happened in those couple decades. So a lot of people started sharing about things that happened after the crucifixion and the resurrection. So he made a part two. In, in a sense, it could have been called Luke, second Luke, because the gospel of, of, of Luke is the story of Jesus while he was here on earth up until the ascension up to heaven, and then he starts off what happened with, he starts off at the ascension of Jesus and then keeps going. You know, so um, it could have easily been called uh, Second Luke. Um, and uh, for the most part, it's called the Acts. What's interesting to me is that in Acts, if you go to your Bible, even my Bible says the Acts of the Apostles. Um, that part is written by just whoever, who, you know, whoever put the Bible together, they, they put a title to it. Luke didn't call it the Acts of the Apostles. I personally believe that it shouldn't have been called that. If anything, it should have been called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, because pretty much at the beginning of Acts, it talks uh, um, about um, the day of Pentecost when the Spirit of God comes upon the 120 in the upper room. And regardless of who it's talking about throughout the all the 28 chapters of the book of acts you see the holy spirit interweaved throughout every single story every single page so to me it's the it's the acts of of the holy spirit okay let me uh put my phone on silent yeah so um but anyways guys um why am i talking about this and why am I comparing it to the book of Ephesians? Here's why: is because so many people, and I get it, because I used to say this too. Um, like it happens a lot. You hear it a lot in conferences and revivals. You'll hear the church needs to go back to the book of Acts. They need to go back to the book of Acts. We need to go back to the book of Acts because the day of Pentecost when the tongues of fire were on people, when people were, were being saved and healing, and Peter Peter's shadow was, you know, because of that, uh, people were getting healed. People were getting healed. So it sounds very exciting, demons being cast out. Um, people were burning their witchcraft stuff. I mean, there was a lot of things going on in the book of Acts. And for me, um, personally, when it, when it comes to a story uh, uh, of the life of people, book, the book of Acts is actually really exciting 
um, encouraging book because it lets you see how the first church operated. What I mean by the first church is before the church was even the church, these were just people that were preaching Jesus. And um, so when people say we need to go back to the book of Acts, um, I agree when it comes to the things of the Holy Spirit. You know, people being baptized, people receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, healing, deliverance, the gospel being preached, evangelism. Paul was pushing pushing the limit with the evangelism, going into cities where he was almost left for dead and stoned and thrown in prison. And yeah, in that sense, yes, the book of Acts is awesome. You know, it even ends in, in the very last verses of Acts chapter 28. Um, let's see, right in 28, 28, it says, therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. And it just ends. You know, it's interesting because one of the only books in the Bible that doesn't have a proper ending is the book of Acts. And I've heard this said, I'm not making it up, but I've always liked and it makes sense to me is when people say the reason there's no ending to the book of Acts is because it truly is not an Acts, not the Acts of the Apostles. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. And you know what? The Holy Spirit is still here. So the book of Acts is still being written by us. We are carrying the torch from the first church all the way to now. So to me, it fits that the book of Acts does not have an ending because the Spirit of God is still here on this earth inside of us. The Spirit of God is still hovering over the waters. You know, so um, um, I think Acts is important, but when people say um, we need to go back to the book of Acts, I want to say, I just told you the things I love about it, but I'll tell you what I, I mean, obviously I love it, but why I don't agree that it, we need to go back to the book of Acts is because structurally the church had no structure. People were, I mean, think about it. You still had Paul um, arguing with Peter because Peter didn't know how to be with non-Jews. You still had people that were walking around with the baptism of John and, and had no idea what the baptism of the Holy Spirit was yet. You have um, uh, different arguments of what was right or what was wrong to be a true Christian to the point where in Jerusalem, they're just like, you, you, these, these Gentiles, these non-Jews, they can't come into the kingdom of God. Yes, they can. No, they can't. They got to abstain from this. You know, it was still a lot of confusion because they were still fleshing this thing out. They, they didn't know what they were doing, guys. When Jesus told them, listen, stay in Jerusalem until the promise has come, which meaning the Holy Spirit. Um, so there was a lot of, uh, of of a lot of these believers that didn't quite know what was going on and, and what was happening. So they were still establishing things. You had Peter getting thrown in jail. Uh, Peter was released from jail. The people didn't believe it. They thought he was a ghost. Um, you have... Um, just a lot of crazy things that were happening in the book of Acts. And matter of fact, the reason we have a Bible today, because they weren't thinking this, guys. When Luke was writing the gospel, he's not like, hey, I, I got to write this book because it's going to be in the Bible. Uh, and you didn't have him writing the book of Acts because, oh, man, this has got to be in the Bible. Um, Luke was just writing the story as it went. And matter of fact, he put himself in the story because it seemed that at one point, as he was writing, he found himself with these guys. So uh, when you read the scriptures, it goes from they used to, Luke was writing, they, used, they did this and they did that. And if you really listen, and, and when you're reading, you notice that later on Luke says, and we did this. So he actually went through the story all the way to the point of his present time that he was involved with these guys. You know, and um, it's really interesting, but again, uh, there, there was arguments. There was, uh, at one point, they were treating um, the people that, the Jews that did not even know how to speak the, the language because they lived in a far-off land, they were being treated unfairly by the Jewish people. So even within the church, 
there was there was problems, you know. Um, and just like anything, anytime you something is brand new and starting, nobody really knows who's who's leading this, what's going on, and why are our leaders arguing? Why is Paul our leader, but he's arguing with Peter? And why is Peter acting different when he's around non-Jews than when he's around Jewish brothers and back and forth and and bickering, you know? And um, then you have Mark has has you know problems with Paul. Um, he basically leaves Paul high and dry. At least that's how Paul felt. And and Mark went back to Israel. But thank God, right? Because then now we have the Gospel of Mark. You know, so you have a lot of issues happening. Okay. So when you say we need to go back to the Book of Acts, um. You, you got to take both of those things into account. Is that, yeah, the Spirit of God is moving, but there was a lot of chaos. A lot of, almost you could say racism between Jews and non-Jews, even within the church, even within Christianity. Um, and a matter of fact, they didn't even call themselves Christians at first. They, were, they used to say, oh, those people of the way. Why would they say that? Because Jesus always says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So they didn't even, they weren't even called Christians yet, or, or you know. So, anyways, why do I say then that I'm comparing it to the book of Ephesians? Okay. It's because of this. The book of Ephesians. Now, even though Luke wrote um, Acts years, a couple of decades later. He was describing what it was like in the beginning. But by the time Paul wrote the book of Ephesians, the church had already now been established 30-something years. There was a lot of maturity. Think about it, right? Think about it. Like myself, I, I gave my life to the Lord in 2004, 18 years ago. I have learned a lot in 18 years. So by the time Paul wrote the book of Ephesians, you know, and I'm not, I'm not going to check, but it's roughly in the 30, 35, 36 year range. That's a lot of time for the maturity of the gospel, for the maturity of the church, for the maturity of what was going on, for establishing leaders and pastors and evangelists. People were already walking in their calling. People understood now what Jesus did and who he was. So the the book of Ephesians is is amazing because it's six chapters, and um, if you, it, it it is the first glimpse of an established, mature church that knows where they stand, and as Paul writes to the Ephesian church, he's right he's giving them meat he ain't giving them milk. And by reading Ephesians, it helps you to understand, as a believer in Christ, where we, sh we should be, how we should be established, you know. And, you know, and I, I mean, I could sit here and read the whole book, you know, but, and I love the way he starts off, right? Because after the salutation or the beginning of the letter, I'll read one and two. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I mean, he's starting a letter the way we would, you know. Let's say we want to write a letter to somebody. Maybe we want to tell them something or ask a question. Of course, we're gonna we're not going to start off. We're going to say, hey, I hope this letter finds you, you know, in good health. And, you know, you're going to start off with a salutation. But look at the first thing he says after he gets past that. He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So he just, he just goes for it and says to the believers, guys, we already have every spiritual blessings that we could have. You already have it. You don't have to work for it. All you got to do is believe in Jesus. All you got to do is serve him, and you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And verse 4 says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So he goes and dives right into it because he's talking to mature Christians. You know, and, and all the quirks of, of trying to figure what it what it is that the Lord was doing, 
you know, and um, you know, and if you so if you read the book of Ephesians, know and understand that he starts talking about um, the the unity within the church um, that we have been um, brought near him by the blood of Christ. That Jesus is the cornerstone. He has a a, a more mature understanding. The believers reading it have a more mature understanding. Um, and he also talks about the the new man. He talks about the gifts because by now all that stuff that happened in the book of Acts, now they they have a better understanding of, of the gifts that we have. You know, like he even says here in uh, Ephesians chapter four, he says, um, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He, so he already understood there's different people that have different callings on them. And these people, God has given them the gift to evangelize or, or be a, a prophet or a pastor or a teacher to equip the believers. And why does he need to equip the believers? So they can then turn and reach more people for Jesus. So, I mean, and then he talks about being a new man in Christ, um, walking in love, walking in light, walking in wisdom, you know, and even talks about uh, children and parents and, and bond servants and, and masters. And then he ends it amazingly with the armor of God. So you hear a more mature Christianity uh, of people that have now walked for years in the things of God and the things of Christ, you know. So, you know, anytime somebody says to you, you know, we need to go back to the book of Acts in, uh, in the spiritual realm. Yes, but not in the way, not all the way, guys, not in, in it, because they were very much in disarray. And I'm, I'm not blaming them because anytime something new starts, um, you don't quite know how to work it in, until it, 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 it evens out, you know, um, it's like finding a, a, a rap a stream with rapids rapid water and it's just really rough water but if you keep following that river down it's going to settle and it's going to flow you know and it's not going to be so destructive you know and um but you know that's what i wanted to talk with you guys today is just you know some of the difference man these are things that sometimes people don't think about and um and my job as a teacher guys is to help bring clarity not only to the scriptures themselves, but just the context of it and understanding and, and see the difference in different books. And why did Paul say this to the Ephesian church? And why did Paul say this to the Roman church? And why did Paul say this? Or, or why did John say this, you know, in the gospel and Matthew didn't say it, but why did John say it? And, and why did Mark say something that Luke didn't say and vice versa, you know? So anyways, guys, with that, um, God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a great, great day and um, see you on Sunday. God bless.